Today on Let's Wine About It, how to make a simple cherry grape wine from store-bought juice. The whole point of what we're doing here today is to explain how to make a simple, tasty, cheap wine with the least amount of commitment on your part to like equipment uh, into different things that might cost more money than you're willing to put in at the very beginning. This this type of wine is the one you want to make if you're not sure if you want to go into this whole like home wine making, home brewing thing. We're going to be using Welch's Black Cherry Grape Juice. You can get this at any grocery store. I got this at Smith's. Um, I got one and a half gallons here, and that's why I'm going to be using this one and a half gallon fermenter. But the cheaper one to, to buy off Amazon for like 10 bucks is the one gallon. So I'll explain how to use this, how to do it in the one gallon, but I will be making mine in the one and a half gallon. So the first thing that I did here is I sanitized all of my equipment. Um, if you don't want to make the commitment at this point to buying Star Sand Sanitizer and uh, doing all of that, I would just really thoroughly wash all of your equipment in soap and water. You don't want to make that a habit. You really want to go the extra step and actually sanitize. But I think that, you know, nine out of 10 times you'll be fine if you just wash with hot water and soap all of the equipment, all the stuff that's coming into contact with your wine. So once you do that, come on back. Step one is to fill your fermenter, whether it's the one gallon or the one and a half gallon, halfway with juice. The reason we fill it halfway and not the whole thing is that we want to shake this up vigorously to get it oxygenated. Oxygen at the beginning of a fermentation is crucial because it allows the yeast, and which is the critical ingredient here, yeast converts sugar to alcohol, it allows the yeast in here to reproduce in a healthy manner. If you don't have a lot of oxygen at the beginning, uh, your yeast colony that builds up will become stressed and it will release hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide smells like rotten eggs. And you don't want that in your fermentation, in your wine, because it smells really gross and it can actually create also that flavoring of rotten eggs. You don't want that. So we fill it to halfway and then we'll shake it up and uh, that mixes in oxygen and gives your yeast plenty to work with. So fill it halfway. Now, why Welch's black cherry grape? Well, you can do this with any store-bought juice, really, but Welch's grape juice is gonna be the most straightforward juice to use for a fermentation because you don't have to add any acid blend, you don't have to add any tannins, you don't really have to add anything to make it tasty. It's, it's grape, that's what people have made wine from for thousands of years. This is Concord grape, it's gonna be really sweet, have a nice flavor, and also it doesn't take a long time to age to taste good. This wine will taste good almost immediately. A lot of wines that you make, especially other fruit-based wines, take like a year to age to come out tasty. If this is your first brew and you're not sure if you want to do something like this as a hobby, you don't want to have to wait a year to find out. I think that's fair. And I chose black cherry, the blend, because cherry adds a nice tang, I think, to wines. I've had a cherry-based wine before and I like that. I like that a lot. So rather than just go the simple Concord grape juice I went with the black cherry blend. You can do straight concord if you want. It's the same exact process. So now that we have it filled halfway, I'm gonna shake it up to oxygenate it. If this one and a half gallon fermenter is the one you happen to use, make sure to screw this cap on or it'll go flying everywhere. Now, if you're not using the one and a half gallon, if you're using the one gallon cardboard, same logic. Fill it to halfway. Uh, if you have a screw cap for it, screw it on. If you just have the bung, you put the bung in and place your thumb over it, shake it up. The next thing to do is to add some sugar to your juice. If you weren't to add any like white sugar at all and just use the, the juice and ferment that, you'd probably get a beverage that's about six to 7% alcohol. That's not bad. It would be super dry at that point. It wouldn't taste sweet and it wouldn't go past six or 7%. In order to increase the amount of alcohol that you get at the end of your fermentation, you have to give your yeast more sugar. So I read the back of the uh, Welch's bottle to figure out how much sugar was in the juice already, and you just multiply it, simple calculation. There's about 1.2 pounds of sugar already in it. So in order to get an alcohol content at the end of this of about 13 to 14%, 
I know that I need to add one and a half pounds of sugar. Now that amount, one and a half pounds to add, is for one gallon, okay? I'm using one and a half gallons, so I'm actually gonna add two pounds of sugar. So if you're using the one and a half gallon fermenter, add two. If you're using the one gallon, add one and a half, okay? Now to weigh out the sugar. And to do that, I'm just using a simple food scale, really cheap one that I found. Um, if you don't wanna use a food scale, you can just use a measuring cup. Two cups of sugar is a pound of sugar. So if you wanna add one and a half pounds, just get your calculator and do some simple calculations. Once you have it measured out, just pour it in. If you're using a one gallon fermenter, then uh, make sure to use a funnel to do that because it's not gonna pour in just through the opening uh, without getting really messy. You wanna use a dry funnel. You use a wet funnel, it's gonna get all gunked up, clogged up, it's not gonna pour in. So if you used one funnel for the juice, either sanitize it and dry it out and then use that one or have two funnels and then use the dry one to get the sugar in. Now I'm gonna mix it all up. If you're using the one gallon fermenter, you get your bung, put it in here, put your thumb on it to close it all up, and shake it up until all of the sugar is thoroughly dissolved. I'm gonna stir this up until the sugar is dissolved. What some people will do when they add sugar to their fermentations is they'll actually make the sh sugar into a syrup first by heating it uh, on the stove with like a cup of water and then they pour it in. That does make it easier to dissolve because you've already dissolved the sugar into water into a syrup form. If you don't do that, it's fine. It just takes a little longer to mix it all up thoroughly. Once the sugar is dissolved, add the remainder of your juice. Now, what's critical at this point when adding your juice is to leave enough headspace in whatever container you're using. If you're using a one gallon container, I only fill the juice to the top of the one gallon label here on the side. If you're using something like this, I'd only fill it to right where I filled it, right here. The reason you leave headspace is oftentimes fermentations, especially those that, you, that have actual fruit in them, will generate thick foam as it's fermenting. And what can happen is, if there's not sufficient space for that foam to like grow up into it'll go into the airlock and it'll blow it off and then the juice will spill off into like your carpet if it's on the floor or wherever you don't want to do that i actually made a fermentation in one of these containers i didn't leave enough headspace and it did exactly that it spilled off into my carpet and that's a big pain in the ass let me tell you so you just want to anticipate that happening. So, some fermentations don't have any of that foaming. That foaming is called croisin, by the way. That happens when you have active yeast at the top of your water line that then just produce all those byproducts. Sometimes that doesn't happen, and that's great, but you want to play it safe, leave some headspace. So then just thoroughly mix it up again. If you're using the one gallon carboy, put your bung in, thumb on top, shake it up. Basically, the final step is to add yeast. Now, why do we add yeast? Because if you didn't do that, nothing would happen. You just have an obnoxiously, disgustingly sweet grape juice. Yeast is the key catalyst. The basics of fermentation are this. You take fruit juice, you add yeast, the yeast eat the sugars in the fruit juice, producing alcohol, and then you have a fermented beverage, either a cider if it's less than 10% alcohol by volume, or wine if it's more than that or beer if you use other stuff, but anyway. We wanna add yeast to this so that the sugars in here can be consumed and alcohol can be produced as a result. Now, alcohol is not the only thing that yeast produce over the course of a fermentation. They also produce carbon dioxide gas in actually equal amounts to the alcohol. If this were a closed container and you threw yeast in here, it would eventually explode, literally, because all of that buildup pressure from the carbon dioxide gas. So what we wanna do is add the yeast, and then we wanna provide a means for carbon dioxide gas to get out. For that, I'm gonna use an airlock, and I'll show that to you. 
Some people do completely open fermentations. That is to say, they don't put a lid on or anything. They might just put some cheesecloth over it and then let it ferment that way. That's fine, but what you risk if you do it that way is uh, sufficiently small bugs or bacteria getting in, or if you have pets, you can get pet dandruff hair into it. I, I never like to do that, so I just use the lid with an airlock, which I'll explain. But what we wanna do here, nice pop, is add Fleischmann's bread yeast. This you can now get at the store. For like the last six months, it's been out of stock because apparently everybody thought in the end of the world they wanted to at least have bread and toilet paper. I don't understand that at all. But you're gonna use half a teaspoon of bread yeast. The reason we're using bread yeast and not a actual official wine made yeast is that bread yeast is something you can buy at the store. And I want to make a recipe for you and present that to you that's very, very simple for you to use and to make. Bread yeast also adds some fruity flavors to the fermentation. It, it, it keeps those fruit flavors. So that's, that's what we're going to do. Half a teaspoon, whether you're making it in one and a half gallon batches or one gallon batches. Sprinkle it right on top. Mix it in there. If there's a bunch of foam, make sure it's not just sitting on the foam, but does mix into your juice. So what do we do now? Well, you want to close your container with an airlock, which I'll go grab. This is what an airlock is. What it does is it allows the carbon dioxide gas generated throughout a fermentation to escape and go out without letting anything in, like bacteria, like bugs, like oxygen. While oxygen is good for a fermentation at the very beginning, it is not good for it after that point. You, I'm sure you've heard that wine, when exposed to oxygen, goes bad. The reason for that is that after the fermentation is complete, various bacteria in here, in the presence of oxygen and alcohol, can produce vinegar. You don't want this to turn into vinegar, you want it to remain wine. So you have to have some sort of covering, some sort of airlock. For open fermentations, what they'll do is they'll put the cheesecloth on it, and then after like a week and a half or two weeks, put an airlock on it. I say, why not just do it at the beginning? And then you need a bung because whether you're using the one and a half gallon fermenter or the one gallon, you need to have a bung to close up the excess space. So you push this into the opening if you have a one gallon and you push this into that little hole and then it's all perfectly sealed up in the right kind of way. The whole point, just to make this even simpler, is this is a one-way valve. It lets things out without letting things in. That's what you want. Oh, wait, 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 I actually forgot my last secret ingredient that would make, that will change this brew from being mediocre to amazing. A stick of vanilla. I, I really think that cherry vanilla flavor combo is awesome. I want that. I think that they'll make this even better than it would be without it. If you don't want to add vanilla, that's totally fine. You'll still end up with a sweet, tangy, nice wine that's drinkable at a young age. But if you do add vanilla, I think that'll make it even better. So all I did with this is I split it open. I basically even just cut it in half uh, to help release those vanilla flavors on the inside to get it into the actual wine. Boop. Then you close it up. Fit your bung into the little opening. If you're using this one, same logic, put your bung right in top. And then you fit your airlock into the smaller opening in the bung. What you wanna do is not just have like air in it, you wanna fill it with sanitizer water to the lines here. If you don't have sanitizer water, if you went with the whole just wash it with soap and water, put vodka in it. Uh, any sort of like neutral spirit uh, that will also keep any bacteria from getting in. And then if it cools too much in here, what happens is the air will compress and it might pull in a little bit of that liquid into the wine. If it's sanitizer water, that's, that's totally fine. It's actually a-okay to do a little bit of that. And if it's vodka, same idea. But if you use rubbing alcohol, uh, that could really ruin the taste of uh, fermentation. So don't use rubbing alcohol. Ta-da! We have a fermentation. What you wanna do at this point is take it put it in a cool, dark environment. I put mine, as you have may have picked up on, on the floor of my closet. It's cool in there, it's dark in there, it works. That's what you want to do. Um, you can put it on a shelf 
But just be careful that if uh, it does end up like foaming up, spilling over, whatever, it will spill and get onto things. So just, just be careful with that. I appreciate you watching. Uh, I hope you're enjoying these videos. I'm enjoying making them and exploring these things together with you. Please like and subscribe um, and comment on the videos. As I have said, I really am open to any sort of suggestions you may have, both on how to improve my videos and for wines that you want to see made, you wanna know how to make. I can show you how to do that. So comment on my videos to explain that. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.